All right, so we've crafted a lead that takes us to a theme. We have a very strong theme that's going to tell us what the story's about. Now we need the story to actually show us what the story's about. So that's what this part's about. We're going to talk about building the best body we can. So remember, the body's goal is to support the theme. Now it, it does it much more extensively um, than, than just that single paragraph of the theme, but it's, it's all focused on what it is that have we presented in the theme and how can we show the reader what we've promised them. So let's look at an article that we first examined in our uh, video on themes, and, and this of course is about the principal, Amir Kilm M. L. Alani, um, who is the principal of Columbus City Schools' most revolutionary new concept, and we identified in the theme what that was, the Columbus International High School. And so the theme takes us to a point in the body of where the story begins. So we don't have to go back to, you know, when uh, uh, Mr. Malawani was born or, you know, all the things that he did beforehand per se. We need to get him fairly quickly to this high school so that we see the significance to the reader. Um, the content of the body is going to depend on the purpose of the story. So if I was just profiling uh, the school, it would take a different tack versus profiling Mr. Kim Malawani. I need to, to show more about his past than I might if I was profiling the school, um, but everything is identified in this theme. So here's the body. But the responsibility for putting that theory into practice falls to Kim Elawani, a native of Cleveland who grew up immersed in two separate but inclusive cultures of his first generation immigrant parents, the Egyptian and Muslim families of his father and the Korean community of his mother. So the story begins where the story begins. Now, part two here, he headed east to Yale to earn undergraduate degrees in film studies and teacher preparation before earning his principal licensure from Harvard in May 2010. We're moving through time now. Now, in the third part here, in between those degrees, Kim Elwani taught in the Bronx Academy of Letters and on a New Mexico Indian reservation, became proficient in Spanish, Egyptian, Arabic, and Korean, and even started with his cousin his own Arabic rap group, The Desert Crew. So what we're, we're tracking through time, this is a profile, to see where we are today. And here's where we are. Throughout it all, he said, his heritage and multiculturalism helped define him, and he hopes it will do the same for the International High School. So we get the rest of the story here, and you're welcome to pause this to read. So th the point is, is, is the theme promised us this was a story about this principal, uh, Kim M. Alani, and his development of this revolutionary new school. So we have to see both of those things. So the beginning part of the story showed about him, and now this remainder of the story is going to show us about the school until we get to the uh, conclusion, which is part seven, and we get this concluding quote, we're going to be asking questions that need to be solved by everyone everywhere. He said, we will ask them, what does it mean for the G8 countries to give money to Ecuador to not drill for oil under the rainforest? What does it mean for the environment, the economy, the sociology? indigenous versus immigrant relations. We need to keep asking because they will be the ones who solve these questions for the world. All right, so see how that sort of sums the story up, but it's not a five paragraph essay summation. It still gives us an idea the story's done. The more research you do, the stronger body you're going to be able to write. You have to do strong research, strong reporting, get the right sources. You have to get sources who can give you the answers that you need. So you have to start thinking immediately like the reader. If I, I'm asking what the reader wants to know, and I, I develop those questions in my mind, the next question needs to be, and we're going to talk about this a lot in interviewing, where do I get these answers for them? Who's going to provide me with the information? What sources do I need to be able to give me the information that the readers want? Please remember that stories tell stories. Let real people tell you their experiences. When you get information from your sources, you're going to get facts from them. You're going to get quotes from them. The facts should be paraphrased. We don't put quotes. Uh, we don't use quotes to present facts. So if someone tells you, I've been at this school for 20 years, that's not something we should quote. Quotes should mean something. So if the fact is, you know, John Smith has been at the school for 20 years. Now the quote that supports it is, this was the first job that I got out of college, and although I thought I'd move on, I realized after a while I never wanted to leave. That quote supports the fact. And then for almost every fact we have, the goal is to get a real person's story, not just opinion, but it's something that demonstrates it for us in order to support these angles for the reader. Try to, to color me interesting. So give me description, give me dialogue, give me sights and sounds and smells and textures and all of the things that would make me feel like I'm part of the story. As the reader, I want to be part of the story. And if I'm part of it, I'm much more likely to get through it from beginning to end. Now, 
when you start writing the body, um, there's a, a, certainly a, a debate that goes back and forth as to whether you outline or you don't outline. Some people really like to. Um, it helps them structure the chronology and you can see holes, um, kind of coordinate your notes and your quotes. Um, some people feel like they don't want to. They feel like it takes time away from writing and they'd rather be much more organic about it and just let the information flow. Um, I'll be honest, and what I do is uh, when I've done my interviews and I've transcribed all of them, I put them under um, sort of a subheading, um, like a history or a, um, studying at Yale or whatever it would be, and then I write the quotes under there, and then I organize my story by those quotes, and I decide in what order I want to cover those topics. So if I have, you know, someone's history, I want to put that first, if I, you know, and I'm going to start to look at how the story shakes out from there, and then I literally start to peel away way, the parts of the quotes I don't need, I'm going to, you know, which parts am I going to paraphrase? That's how I put a story together, but there's lots of different ways to do it, and, and writing's a really personal pursuit, so um, it's important that you do the, the style of writing that, that makes you feel the most comfortable.